Merry Christmas and welcome back to The Spring Online. If we haven't met yet, I'm Matt. I'm the lead pastor here at The Spring and I'm so glad that you're here with us today. We're in the middle of kind of an unusual series of Christmas messages here at The Spring. Typically for Christmas, we talk about Jesus being born in the manger in Bethlehem and all of those things. And it's such a huge and important story. But this year, we're spending time to really focus in on the why. Why was Jesus born? Why did Jesus do all of these things? And really the answer to that question is summed up in this old Latin phrase, missio dei, the mission of God. All of this was a part of God's mission in the world. And so we're talking about what God is wanting to accomplish in the world and how we partner with him in what he's wanting to do in the world. So before we dive into today's message, why don't we just take a moment, we're gonna pray, and we're gonna take some time to clear our hearts and our minds to be ready to receive what the Holy Spirit wants to say to us today. So let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you that today, as we take a look at the scriptures and we consider these ideas, that ultimately, God, what is happening is you're inviting us into what you're doing in the world. And so I pray, God, that, that during these moments, my friends on the other side of this screen would receive from your spirit everything that they need today. Holy Spirit, would you speak to us? Would you move in miraculous ways? And I pray, God, that during this time that the meditation of my heart and the words of my mouth would be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, today, if there's one thought that I want us to focus in on, one idea that I really want to ground our, uh, our whole message today in, and one thought that I want you to wrestle with all week long, it's simply this. It's that we are invited into restoration. We are invited into restoration. And we're going to talk about that today. We're going to answer two questions today. Really, the first question being, what is the restoration that we're invited into? And the second question being, what is our role in restoration? So if we're invited into this, what is it and what are we supposed to do about it? Now, before we get into that, as I mentioned a moment ago, we're talking about this idea of the missio dei, that God is on mission in the world, that he has a specific plan, a specific purpose, something that he is trying to accomplish in the world. And that when Jesus was born, it was God putting his finger literally on the scales of time in the favor of humanity. Humanity that had been separated from God is now brought close to him because Jesus came and made a way for us to draw close to God. And as we consider all of these things, you know, a few weeks ago we talked about our mandate as a church to follow Jesus together. That's about the Missio Dei. And last week we talked about becoming a people of invocation, a people of prayer, a people that, that will invoke the presence and power and will of God in our lives. That is about the Missio Dei. And today, I wanna to talk about what it means for us to become a people of restoration. Now, if you've been around the spring for any amount of time, you know this is something that I've spoken about a number of times, that we are to be a people of restoration. But today, what I really wanna do is give us a biblical framework for understanding what restoration is. And understand this, that it's not something that we do on our own, it's not something we do in our own ability, it's not something that, 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 that you are even gonna be capable of doing but it's something that you are invited into, that God is inviting you into experiencing restoration and being an implement of restoration. That's what we're gonna talk about today. So the first big question that we need to answer is simply this, what is the restoration that we are invited into? If I were to sum it up in a, in a quick phrase, I would say that the restoration we're invited into is new creation. And, and we're gonna talk about what that means. I wanna give you a biblical picture of restoration because a lot of times we hear that word restoration and we think about like a classic car, right? My first car was a 1973 Volkswagen Carmen Ghia. I loved that thing. It was the poor man's Porsche, right? It, it, it kind of looked like a Porsche. It had those big kind of bug eye headlights, but it was 100% Volkswagen. I loved that car. It was so much fun to drive, but man, it needed a ton of work. I remember I had started driving it again years ago when Brandy and I first started dating, long before we got married. I had started driving that car again, and you know, if you know anything about a Volkswagen, it's, it has an air-cooled engine, right? It, it doesn't have a, a typical engine. So the engine's in the back of the car, it's an air-cooled engine, and the way that the heat worked in that car was you would open a couple of valves and the heat vents would open up, and it would take heat off of the engine and pump it into the cab which is actually kind of a brilliant way to heat the car. It's, it's more or less how the heaters in your car still work today. But here was the problem. 
my Volkswagen needed a brand new exhaust system. So when you opened up those valves to let heat come in from the floor of the car, you also had to roll the windows down about that far because if you didn't, you were just gonna fill the cab with exhaust fumes. Um, Brandy hated that car, I think. I don't know that she hated it, but the experience of it wasn't exactly great because every time she would get out of the car, she's like, I smell like gasoline, I smell like exhaust, but I love that car. It just needed more restoration. It needed some more work. It needed some more, some more love given to it. Listen, we think about restoration and we think of taking something that's old and broken and, and returning it to its, its former glory. Biblical restoration is a different thing altogether. In fact, if I were to try to define biblical restoration, the kind of restoration that I believe God has called us into, we say that biblical restoration is, is a return to what was, but without going backward. We say it again. Biblical restoration is a return to what was, but without going backward. See, sometimes people hear that phrase like, we're going to be a church that's all about restoration. And when you hear that phrase, there are certain things that come with it, right? When you hear people say it's a church of restoration, it, it tends to mean like this is a church for, for people that, 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 you know, their whole lives have fallen apart, whether it was because of addiction or bad choices or whatever. These are people that, that have really hit the rock bottom, and this is a restoration church. It's a church for those kinds of folks. And listen, we are a church for those kinds of folks, but we're also a church for everybody. We're a church for the whole family. And we're going to talk about that specifically next week. But listen, as we talk about what it is to be a church of restoration, I don't want us to think that that means that we're just a church that's full of recovery programs and 12-step programs. And, 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 and while those things are good and, and no one is saying those things are useless, it's not what we're talking about when we talk about being a church of restoration. Biblical restoration is a return to what was without going backward. So what do I mean by that? Well, to put it simply, it's embracing the divine order and intention that the world was designed with while moving forward. Let me put it this way. God designed the world. He designed you with intention and order in mind. In fact, the, 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 the most accurate way to speak of, of God creating the world in Genesis was to say that he brought order to the chaos. He brought order to the chaos. And then when humanity introduces sin, rebellion to God, we introduce sin into that created order, we reintroduced chaos. God brought order to the chaos, and then we reintroduced chaos through our rebellion to him, through trying to think that we could do it all on our own, through trying to think that, that somehow we didn't need God. But we do need him. Because he is the one that has been the originator of order. He is the one that created us and he designed us with that intention in mind that we would be a part of the order that he set into the world. So restoration in a biblical sense is a return to that divine order, but it's not necessarily moving backwards. Jesus doesn't save you and then call you to look backwards to try to find a better version of yourself. Jesus doesn't save you and then, and then invite you to try to find your best self. Instead, he's inviting you into something else altogether. If we trace the whole narrative arc of the Bible, starting in Genesis and working our way through the book of Revelation, we see that the Bible begins with God bringing order to the chaos and establishing a beautiful paradise garden, Eden, where the first humans were. And in Eden, in that perfected paradise garden, we introduce sin, chaos again, into the equation. And everything in the creation falls again into chaos. And so there's this constant struggle between the order that God has created us to function in and the chaos that we want to function in. Order being following the, 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 the authority and submitting to the authority of God and chaos being living outside of that authority. It's that constant struggle of chaos and order that we're living through. But if you read through to the end of the book, you read that whole narrative arc of scripture, we get the book of Revelation, and we see at the end of all things, the picture that John paints for us is one of extreme order, because in that order there's beauty. He tells us that a day is coming when there will be a new heaven and a new earth, because the first heaven and the first earth have passed away entirely. That God will so reorder the chaos that you won't even be able to tell that it once was something else, that it's a new heaven, a new earth. Why do I bring that up? Because it's the same in us. 
when we allow Jesus to do the restorative work in us, he's not just setting us back in order, but he's taking the chaos and he's creating something new. It's this movement from garden to city, garden of Eden to the city of Revelation. You see, this is what it means to be a new creature in Christ. When we come to Jesus, we're told that we're a new creation. In fact, 2 Corinthians 5.17 says it this way. It says that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. Coming to Jesus is not a fresh start. It's becoming something brand new and starting something brand new. It's not a, it's not a second chance. It's not a do-over. It's a brand new creation. That's the restoration that God is inviting us into. He's inviting us into the restoration that comes only from experiencing the salvation power of Jesus, only from experiencing what it is to have Jesus totally remake our humanity, totally remake us into something new. When someone comes to Christ, they are becoming a brand new creature. And so when we talk about being a church of restoration or becoming a people of restoration, what we're literally talking about is that biblical order of restoration where Jesus reforms us, where he restores us and he makes us and he takes us out of the chaos of our sin and sets us into the order that comes from submitting to Christ. That means that the life that you lived before you came to Jesus has to be done with. It has to be set aside. We have to be willing to admit that sometimes we try to cling to old behaviors and excuse them away. We try to cling to old ways of living and excuse them away. We we try to say, well, you know, it's an old habit and habits are hard to break. Or we say, you know, it's, it's just the way that I've always thought. It's just the way I've always been. Listen, coming to Jesus is becoming a brand new creature and it's choosing a whole new path. And when you try to just wander back onto the easy old path, you have to remember, I'm leaving the chaos for the order of creation. This is what it means that we move from the derelict garden of chaos into the well-ordered city, the divine order. So what is the restoration we're invited into? It's simple. We're invited to be a people of restoration. That means a people of the gospel message of Jesus. A people of the gospel message of Jesus. You and I, we can't change anyone. You and I, we can't fix anyone. But Jesus can. He's the one that makes us brand new. He's the one that transforms our lives. And we have to be willing to trust that. We have to be willing that more than any program, more than anything that we could possibly offer to someone, the one thing that people actually need is a transformative experience with Jesus, where their lives become his, where they surrender to him. Maybe that's what you're in desperate need of today. Maybe you need that biblical sense of restoration. Restoration that that doesn't look like just trying to to fix up something old and make it look new, but instead making you into something brand new altogether. So what is restoration? What's the restoration we're invited into? To be a people of the gospel. That I was dead in sin and Christ died for me. And now I live a new life in him. That's what it is to be a people of restoration. So what is our role in restoration then? If Jesus is the one that transforms, if Jesus is the one that makes a new way forward, if Jesus is the one that makes us a new creation, then uh, then what are we doing? If we're invited into restoration, what is our role in it? Well, I I would challenge you to look at Galatians chapter 6 with me. Galatians 6 verses 1 through 3 reads like this. Dear brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by some sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path. And be careful not to fall into the temptation yourself. Share each other's burdens and in this way, obey the law of Christ. If you think you're too important to help someone, you're only fooling yourself. You're not that important. Oof. So, so what's our role? What's our role in restoration? Well, it's, it's to help bear the burden of one another. Listen to it again. If someone else, another believer, becomes overcome by sin, 
Those of us who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path. Notice that Paul doesn't tell us, go find people that aren't following Jesus and and point at their sin and tell them how all the things they're doing wrong. No, no, no. This is for those that have chosen to follow Jesus. Our role as a church, as a community of people following Jesus together is this, to gently and humbly and with determination push one another forward and away from the sinful lives that we once lived. Listen, it's with gentleness and humility, it's with gentleness and humility and determination that we're invited to share one another's burdens. We are supposed to share one another's burdens. If all you do is show up at church and sing some songs and listen to a sermon and then go home, you're not sharing anyone else's burdens. You have to look around the room You have to be intentional and say, I am going to build relationships here. I'm going to to set roots here and be a part of this community. Because if I am going to be a person of restoration, then it means that I have to be willing to link arms with my brothers and sisters who are also following Jesus and hold one another accountable. Listen to what Paul says. He says that if we're going to obey the law of Christ, then we have to share each other's burdens. Share each other's burdens. You know what that means? In context, if someone's struggling with with sin, a habit they can't break, if someone's struggling with the chaotic nature as opposed to the ordered divine nature of their new created self, then we have to share in that burden together. Not just like the clergy, not just, not just pastors and leaders that have to come alongside and, and share with one another. No, no, no. This is an invitation to the whole church. Share with each other your burdens. And that's not just a, let me tell you about my problems. That's a, I'm going to to come alongside of you. And I'm gently and humbly going to help you see those moments and help you come into alignment with Jesus. What is biblical restoration? It's that new creature that only Christ can make you into. What's our role in restoration? Helping us, one another, remember that we're new creatures in Christ. Our role is to come alongside each other and to bear one another's burdens. You see, it's in the sharing of burdens that we become conduits of God's restorative new creation work. Sometimes people say, well, you know, I I just, I keep asking for for God to to move through my life. I want the Holy Spirit to use me. I, I want to experience the gifts of the Spirit. I want to experience the move of God in my life. You want to know how to experience the move of God in your life? Start to share one another's burdens. Because you will only experience the gifts of the Spirit as you actually need them. If you're living a comfortable, content life following Jesus, odds are good you stopped following Jesus and you just sat down along the way. If you're living a comfortable and content life and you're not challenged to go deeper as you follow Jesus, then odds are good that that really what you're doing is saying, I want more of God without giving more of myself. To really follow Jesus is to take up the cross. It's the way of Jesus. It's to say, it's not about me. It's about how I can serve those around me. It's about how I can give my life away. And as you begin to give your life away, even though you don't have the ability, even though you don't know how to do it, the Holy Spirit will begin to empower you and use you as a force of restoration in the world. You want to be a part of the restoration work that only God can do? Then you have to put yourself in a position to say, God, I am here to participate. Not just to reach out to a broken community, not just to to look at our cities and go, wow, I I see the, the, the brokenness all around. No, we have to start with the household of faith. We have to start with the church. We have to start with one another. We can't possibly try to bear the burdens of the unbeliever if we haven't first tried to bear the burdens of our brothers and sisters. It's where it starts. It's where it starts. God is inviting us into restoration. And in a very practical way, he's inviting our structured church into a process of restoration. You know, it was at the beginning of this year, in January, we we took on a second physical location, right? Our, 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 Our first location being in Desert Hot Springs, and then we took on a second location in Cathedral City. And I believe God is going to do something great through both of our locations. But what's interesting, and and you parents that have multiple children will know this, 
Different kids need different things at different times. You know, it might feel like one kid needs less attention because they've kind of reached more independence while the younger kid needs more attention because they just need more attention because they're younger and vice versa. Things shift and change. Those things go back and forth. And right now we're experiencing some of that within our church. We see a need to make some changes in both locations because we see different needs arising in each one. So we're going to do some work together to really breathe the life of restoration into both locations. So let's talk about Desert Hot Springs location for a moment. The first thing that we're going to do is starting in January, we're, we're gonna move to a 10 a.m. service in Desert Hot Springs. I know, I know. Those of you that are not morning people, like me, are so excited that we're moving from nine o'clock to 10 o'clock. There's a really practical reason that we're doing it though. It's not just because Pastor Matt isn't a morning person, though that may be a relevant reason. It's not the only reason. In fact, the biggest reason is this. We have seen a steady flow of new families come check out our church this year. But you know what's challenging for, for young families? Is on Sunday morning, getting to church at nine o'clock. And I know, I know, some of you say, well, okay, but they get their kids to school on time all week long. Yes, but this is Sunday morning and people are establishing a new pattern in, in going to church and checking church out for the first time for many of them. So let's remove a roadblock. Let's remove a hurdle that's keeping people from, from participating in the life of our great church there in Desert Hot Springs. So we're gonna move that service to 10 a.m., which means there's going to be a change to the service schedule for Cathedral City as well. And that's a strategic move too. We're gonna to move Cathedral City to a Sunday evening, six o'clock service. So 6 p.m. on Sunday evenings starting in January. There's a couple of reasons we're doing that. One. We wanted to create more space between both services. We want to be able to build more fellowship and more time together at each location. We don't want to feel like we have to rush out of one service to get to the other. We just want to make sure that we're doing everything that we can to actually be a community and not just a worship service. But also with moving to a 6 p.m. service in Cathedral City, we're looking at the Cathedral City location and the unique need that we're seeing in Cathedral City is that we really kind of need to treat this as a brand new church plant. We have a really faithful and amazing congregation in Cathedral City, and I love them so much. And I met with them this last Sunday and I presented this idea, and listen, this is a tough thing for a church to say, hey, we're gonna move off Sunday morning to Sunday evening, we're gonna kind of revamp the whole church model, everything that we're doing starting in January. And you know what? While it's a hard thing to hear, our folks in Cathedral City said, you know what, whatever it takes, we want to see Jesus reach that community. We want to see the restoration power of Jesus at work in Cathedral City. And so that's what we're doing. We're positioning ourselves to say, we're going to act like a church plant, like a brand new church, that the spring in Cathedral City is a brand new thing. And so there will be some Sunday nights where we have a worship service. You know, we'll, we'll sing to Jesus and I'll, I'll preach the word of God. And then some Sunday nights for the next several months, we're, we're going to do like open house night at the church where, where we, we have a little barbecue out on the lawn and we put up a bounce house for the kids and slip and slides and stuff like that because we need to get to know our neighbors and we need to know our neighbors. We need our neighbors to know that there's a thriving and healthy church available for them in Cathedral City. The reason I bring this up is because if we're going to be a church of restoration, a people of restoration, it means that we have to be invested it means that we have to be the kind of people that step up to the plate and say, I will be a part. I will be a part of what God is doing in the world. You see, we have to be able to dream bigger so that we can work together. We gotta be able to work together. What if, what if God is putting something in your heart and you're from our desert hot springs location and God begins to put something in your heart to say, you know what? I could help serve at the Cathedral City location. We need more volunteers for children's ministry in Cathedral City so that we can build a thriving, vibrant children's ministry. And maybe you would say, you know what, the Sunday that I serve in Desert Hot Springs, at, at, at that service where I serve in kids ministry, I'd still like to be able to go to church. So I'm gonna serve in the morning, and then that evening I'm gonna go to service at Cathedral City. Or, or maybe you would say, you know what, I'm already serving that morning, I'll go serve again that evening. Whatever it looks like, we're gonna need an all hands on deck approach at both locations. So listen, if you're, from our Cathedral City congregation. He's saying, you know, I still wanna be a part of a Sunday morning church. Fantastic. Join us in Desert Hot Springs at 10 a.m. starting in January. But I would encourage you, whichever location you're from, 
we're gonna do something new and exciting in Cathedral City. We have a new marketing plan in place. We, we, we are, we're excited to start to get more and more into the community. We're finally at a place coming through this pandemic where it feels more like we can say, you know what, let's just get the neighborhood out. Let's be a part. That's what we're doing. So come be a part. Because restoration begins with us individually as we follow Jesus, and it should expand through us as a community as we work together. Listen, maybe the biggest thing that you need today, you're going, you know, that's all interesting about your church and stuff, but, but really what I need is I need restoration. I feel like my life is all chaos because of my choices and my sin. It's time for me to surrender to Jesus to come under his divine authority, to come under the order of things that he created for the world and follow him. Today, if you want to follow Jesus, I want to invite you to pray a simple prayer with me. It's as easy as ABC. A, you've got to be willing to admit. Admit that, that you are someone lost in sin away from Jesus. B, believe. Believe that Jesus is the one and the only one that can restore you make you a new creature in Christ, and see you've got to choose. You've got to choose to follow Jesus all the days of your life. Admit, believe, and choose. If today that's you, pray this prayer with me. Right where you're at, pray it out loud. Pray it from your guts. One sentence. Go ahead, pray with me like this. Jesus, I give you my life. It's that simple. Jesus, I give you my life. If you just prayed that prayer for the first time, or, or maybe it's the first time in a long time and you're coming back to Jesus, I want to invite you to either drop into the comments, send us a direct message, or text the word follow, F-O-L-L-O-W, to the number that's on the screen right now, and one of our pastors will get in contact with you. We would love to take your next steps with you as we follow Jesus together. Listen. A lot of great things are coming up in our church, some big changes in January, but also this month, December, we have lots of great things happening as we celebrate Christmas. So check out the website, check the social media, all the dates, everything, it's all there. Come and be a part of what we're doing with Christmas at the Spring. Hey!